Hello, everybody, and uh, good morning. I, it's, uh, my name is Dr. Rupert Call. I'm going to be talking to you today about the impact of the penile microbiome on uh, immunology and HIV susceptibility. Uh, I really want to thank the organizer, as the organizer of the International Workshop on Microbiome and HIV for inviting me to speak. Uh, this is a fantastic meeting, and I hope everybody's enjoying the speakers so far. Uh, I don't have any conflicts of interest, but I do want right up front to acknowledge several critical collaborators, uh, and I'll tell you more about them at the end, but Dr. Ronald Galawango, Dr. Cindy Liu, and Dr. Jessica Proger. Uh, any one of the four of us could have presented this work, uh, and uh, thank you very much for, for inviting me to present it this time. Uh, the work that I'm going to present is based in two large cohorts from Uganda, the Rakai Community Cohort Study of over 20,000 individuals in quite rural uh, parts of Uganda, uh, but with relatively limited immunology infrastructure. But this is the site where one of the randomized clinical trials of circumcision was performed uh, that showed the reduction of about 60% in HIV risk. Uh, and IRV UVRI, uh, where we have fantastic uh, vaccine immunology facilities uh, and a great immunology infrastructure, as well as links to uh, clinical cohorts uh, in the Entebbe community. So I'm going to address these two questions. How does the foreskin increase HIV risk? And are the non-surgical alternatives to penile circumcision, since many men don't want to undergo a, a, a surgical procedure to reduce their risk. And uh, I'm going to be emphasizing two things. I'm going to be emphasizing the, uh, the integrity of the barrier, which is important in terms of HIV uh, acquisition at any mucosal site. Uh, this cartoon here from uh, uh, Dr. Fauci's group uh, appears to be showing a cartoon uh, of the uh, gut mucosa, uh, but particular, uh, uh, of particular importance and something that's been a focus for our group is looking at the density in the underlying tissue of activated CD4 T cells as HIV targets. So that virus has to first cross the barrier and then be able to uh, uh, infect activated cells and generate productive infection in that way. Uh, I'm not going to go in great detail into the background of the penile immunology studies that we've done, uh, but Dr. Proger, during her PhD work and her subsequent work at the University of Western Ontario, uh, has shown several key things. One is that IL-8 levels in the coronal sulcus, so that is the space with very low oxygen density deep to the inner foreskin, uh, uh, is, uh, is enriched for IL-8. Uh, so this is by far the most abundant cytokine in the, uh, in the coronal sulcus. And IL-8 levels within that coronal sulcus correlate with CD4 density in the foreskin tissue that is uh, overlying uh, that microbiome, that, that, uh, that space. Uh, and we'll see later that that's related to the microbiome within the coronal sulcus. Uh, the adjusted odds ratio for HIV acquisition in men who do have detectable IL-8 levels in the coronal sulcus is about two or three-fold increased risk. And uh, the, the foreskin tissues themselves are enriched for a number of uh, key HIV target cells, uh, both CCR5 uh, positive uh, CD4 T cells, and in particular, Th17 T cells that uh, uh, both uh, uh, myself and uh, uh, Lyle McKinnon and uh, Tom Hope have shown our, our key HIV target cells very early in the process of HIV acquisition. Uh, Jessica showed in her work that those Th17 cells are decreased in the foreskin of men who are exposed to HIV without infection and increased in the context of men who are herpes 2 seropositive, which is known to be a risk for HIV acquisition. So what induces that local cytokine production? Uh, we know there's a precedent uh, in women where there have been many studies looking at the genital microbiome inflammation and HIV acquisition, that the presence of certain bacteria in the microbiome, which tends to divide itself very nicely into different community state types, either predominated by a lactobacillus species or predominated by diverse gram-positive and gram-negative anaerobes, the density of certain bacteria is clearly associated with more inflammation and certain bacteria clearly associated with less inflammation. And that's shown nicely in some work from uh, uh, Brett Shannon in our group with the x-axis showing the bacterial density in the female genital tract microbiome of the absolute abundance of different bacterial species and the y-axis in each of these figures showing the proportion of women uh, who have genital inflammation defined by cytokine levels. And what you see is that for Lactobacillus crispatus, an increased density of Lactobacillus crispatus is associated with a lack of inflammation 
uh, whereas uh, Lactobacillus innus was neutral in terms of genital tract inflammation, and Prevotella bivia in particular, but Gardnerella vaginalis as well, uh, is strongly associated with increased risk of inflammation as we have an increased density of that bacterial species. So this led us to be interested in the microbiome in the uh, foreskin, specifically the coronal sulcus and its association with inflammation. We know that penile circumcision dramatically changes the microbiome. This is showing how the shared microbiome that's very similar within the clinical trial at baseline prior to circumcision within Ugandan men diverges dramatically after circumcision with a loss of gram negative and gram positive anaerobes and a gain of skin, skin type bacteria, but particularly Carinibacterium species. Uh, in the initial work, we saw reductions, and this is uh, uh, Cindy Liu's work, this initial study showed reductions in 10 specific bacterial genera after circumcision. And our initial immune analysis focused specifically on those 10 genera that we had already shown to be decreased after circumcision. And if you look just at those in the men who remain uncircumcised within the uh, uh, clinical trial of uh, circumcision, you'll see that an increased density of almost all those bacteria is associated with an increased odds ratio of HIV acquisition, with one exception, and that exception is a negative acoccus. So one bacterial species, interestingly, was not associated with HIV acquisition among those men who remained uncircumcised. But in those who remained uncircumcised, all these other ones that decrease after circumcision are associated with an increased risk of HIV acquisition. We were interested in looking at whether that related to the same immune parameters that uh, uh, Jessica had already shown were linked to HIV acquisition. And the answer is yes. Uh, so that as the density of Prevotella increases, when you hit an inflection point, when you hit a certain density of uh, Prevotella, we then see a clear linear increase in the uh, uh, levels of IL-8. Same thing for Porphyromonas, same thing for Feingoldia. And interestingly, the only exception that was not associated with inflammation at any density was negative acoccus, that same bacteria that was not linked to uh, uh, HIV risk uh, among those men who remained uncircumcised. Uh, uh, Cindy has now gone on to do, uh, over the last year, a much more uh, in-depth analysis of the penile microbiome and its association with uh, uh, both uh, immune parameters and HIV risk. Uh, this work's unpublished, uh, and so thank you very much to uh, Cindy for letting me present it. Uh, I think the first main message is that unlike the vagina, and very interesting to me anyway, there are no clear community state types within the penile microbiome. Uh, most men have the same core penile bacteria, just present in differing amounts. Uh, Six specific bacterial species, however, the, the bacteria tend to travel in packs. So as the density of one goes up, the density of other species go up. But six specific species were associated with each of HIV risk, the levels of IL-8 in the foreskin, and the density of CD4 T cells expressing CCR5, so those target cells in the underlying foreskin tissue. We call those basic species or bacteria as associated with seroconversion immunology and cells. And those include Peptostreptococcus, uh, Anaerobius, two species of Prevotella, including Prevotella bivia, and uh, three species of diasta, dial Dialista. Uh, uh, again, uh, bacteria that have been linked to bacterial vaginosis and inflammation in the female genital tract. Interestingly, no foreskin bacteria protected against HIV. Uh, Carinibacterium was associated with reduced levels of IL-8. Uh, but we did not see anything protecting against HIV acquisition. And Lactobacillus crispatus, that's protective in women, actually was associated with increased levels of IL-8 and an increased risk of HIV acquisition. If you do a network analysis, which Cindy has done with Dan Park and her group, uh, what you see is that uh, you see two clusters of bacteria, not just in the seroconversion cohort, uh, but this is reproduced in a completely independent cohort of men uh, where we ran the cellular immunology studies. And what you see is that uh, in one cluster are the bacteria associated with increased levels of IL-8. So uh, a, an orange or a red color means increased levels of IL-8. So those are the basic species in particular. Uh, whereas in a completely separate cluster, we see negative acoccus, Carinibacterium, and Staphylococcus associated with a decreased level of IL-8 indicated by the blue uh, coloration here in this figure. And if you then look at the immune parameters in more detail, both IL-8 and I'll show you the cell density afterwards, you see that 
the density of bacteria uh, is not what drives inflammation. So here we have two groups of men in the left-hand figure. One has uh, a high density of basic species, the inflammatory species. One has an equivalently high density of bacteria, but it's the control species. And we see the same density, uh, but very different levels of IL-8 between these two groups. And we also see uh, similarly low levels of IL-8 in men with an overall low density of bacteria, uh, including the, uh, the, the a low density of the basic species. Particularly interesting to me is looking at the cellular immunology uh, in terms of uh, associations with the microbiome. So again here, uh, uh, Dr. Proja, uh, Jessica, has looked at uh, the group that have the high density of basic bacteria, the high density of the control bacteria, and then low density of all bacteria, including the basic species. And what you see is that that, that microbiome of the coronal sulcus is associated with dramatic increase in T cell density within the inner foreskin. Uh, so the high basic bacteria associate with a very high density of, bacteria, of, of T cells within the inner foreskin, not within the, uh, uh, not the, uh, the control taxa and not the low density bacteria, and not at all with uh, a T cell density in the outer foreskin, which is what you would expect, because of course the outer foreskin tissues are not in contact with uh, the coronal sulcus uh, microbiome. Interestingly, there's also no impact on proportion of CD4 T cells within those T cells and no increase in Th17 cells, Th22 cells, or the makeup of the, uh, the T cell subsets within the CD4 cluster. So is there a way that we can reduce the density of these BV type bacteria, in particular those basic bacteria, uh, to reduce HIV risk without a surgical procedure? And to investigate that, uh, uh, Dr. Ronald Galawanga recently completed a, a, a randomized clinical trial where 125 men presenting to Entebbe General Hospital were randomized to either undergo uh, immediate circumcision, which is the reason why they came to the hospital, that's 25 men, and then four additional groups were randomized to uh, one of four different uh, antimicrobial interventions. One was oral tinidazole, very similar to metronidazole that's used to treat bacterial vaginosis commonly in women. Uh, but just given for a two-day course, uh, and three topical interventions, topical flagell, topical clindamycin, and uh, topical hydrogen peroxide. The uh, topical metronidazole and clindamycin are also treatments for bacterial vaginosis in women. Uh, primary endpoint in the study was virus entry into foreskin CD4 T cells at the time of circumcision four weeks later, uh, and the study's now complete. 116 out of 125 men uh, completed follow-up, so came, provide, uh, were given the product, applied the product, and came back for uh, circumcision uh, uh, four weeks later. And it's uh, early to give you the, uh, the final results. Unfortunately, shipping of our samples was uh, dramatically delayed by the uh, COVID pandemic, uh, but I can give you initial results of the virus entry assays that were done in real time uh, at the IRB facility. And what you see from the APM trial, that's the ALTA penile microbiome trial, is that the control group uh, has higher levels of pseudovirus entry than the tinidazole group. So we see a significant reduction in virus entry in those men who receive tinidazole, the, again, the oral equivalent of uh, uh, metronidazole for bacterial vaginosis treatment. Whereas we saw no impact on virus entry in any of the topical groups. I've lumped them together because they're really a much of a muchness. Uh, and that may relate to uh, CCR5 expression. So we see again within the tinidazole group decreased CCR5 expression on foreskin targets, whereas uh, we see uh, higher levels both in the topical group and in the control group. We really hope to be able to present to you the uh, microbiome and the cytokine data soon, and those samples ha have now been shipped and we'll be able to run those assays. So just to summarize, foreskin is clearly linked to increased HIV risk. Uh, we think that a lot of that risk is uh, driven by the microbiome. Uh, and uh, in particular by these six bacterial species, these six basic species that are linked to both IL-8 levels and to an increased uh, density of CD4 T cells, uh, particularly within inner foreskin tissues. Uh, and it looks at, from the preliminary data as if we may have some success in changing uh, immunology and HIV susceptibility uh, by intervening on the microbiome uh, without the need for surgical uh, interventions. I want to acknowledge a lot of people who've helped out with this funding from the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, which is our, our national uh, federal funding agency. Uh, my own group, particularly Sonia Hubner, who runs many of the cytokine assays in our, in our lab. Uh, Dan Park and Cindy from George Washington, 
Uh, the Rakai group, there are too many people really to list, in particular Godfrey Kagosi, who's been uh, uh, amazing at uh, helping to coordinate many of our studies, Aaron Tobian, Ron Gray, Maria Wawa from Hopkins, uh, and uh, uh, most recently Brenda Oketch, who is the scientific director uh, at uh, IRB Uganda. Vicky, I've underlined here because she ran many of our flow assays in that clinical trial. And of course, Jessica Proger uh, from UWO, who ran much of the immunohistochemistry and all the previous immunology studies within, uh, uh, within my group. So uh, uh, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, I hope there's now a way for you to uh, uh, give me some questions, uh, but uh, thank you for your interest.